Hello. Today we're going to be tackling audio drift. What is it and how do we get rid of it? Let's go. So today we're talking about something called audio drift. And this happens when you have recorded your audio separately from your visuals in a uh, external audio recorder or an app in a cell phone. And then you sync them in post in your video editing program and they start off synced. But later in the video, they have drifted out of sync like this. And it's an absolute nightmare to try to fix the problem. A lot of people who don't know what happened here, they keep splicing their audio and drifting and moving it forward to try to resynchronize every two to three minutes. And it's an absolute nightmare to fix. So today I'm going to tell you why this happened. I'm going to then show you the easy, easy fix for actually making sure that this doesn't happen in the future. As always, everything that uh, I bring to you is brought by the business Camera Lessons Online. I hope that you go and check it out. Uh, that's where I have uh, my book on macro photography. I've got a four hour course uh, on introduction to photography skills. And I also have several free downloadable uh, PDFs on teaching some essentials of photography skills. Anyway, let's talk about audio drift. This happens because your camera might say it's shooting 30 frames a second, but it's not. In fact, your camera is likely shooting something slightly shorter than that. For instance, I'm shooting this video on my Sony a7R Mark III, which says it shoots 30 frames a second, but it doesn't. In fact, it's shooting 29.97 frames a second. Now, if you create a video project for 30 frames a second, you have audio that's recorded separately at 30 frames a second, but you drop in video that is 29.97 frames a second. It doesn't quite fit. It has to stretch a little bit. And so slowly over the course of time, usually eight minutes and you can totally tell, the video has just drifted ahead of the audio. That's what's happening. So in fact, we call it audio drift, but it's the visuals that have actually drifted away from the audio, not the other way around. The way to fix this is to change your project frame rate when you create the project in your video editing program. So let's go and take a look at how easy that is to do. So you would be totally forgiven for thinking that because your camera says it's recording 30 frames a second or 24 frames a second, that it is. And even if you looked it up, you might be given incorrect information. So here I am uh, on CNET uh, looking at my camera, the Sony a7R Mark III, and when it tells me the frame rate, it's telling me it's 30 frames a second. But in fact, this is not correct. Over here, I get the correct information, uh, and that is that when it says it's shooting 24 frames a second, it's actually 23.98. And when it's shooting 30 frames a second, it's 29.97. And many cameras are like this. This is very, very common. So if I'm over here in a video editing program, and I create a new event, then what I'm gonna find is that I've probably selected 30 frames a second as the frame rate for this video, except if I'm doing slow motion type work, because I shot 30 frames a second. Now, if I did this and recorded my audio separately, it would drift out. So, if I selected this when I was recording my audio separately, the audio would drift. That's why 29.97 and 23.98, and in fact, why 59.94 are all here. Many cameras, when they say they're shooting 24, 30, or 60 frames a second, are in fact doing these slightly shorter frame rates. So all I need to do is select this frame rate for my 30 frame a second video, or the 59.94 if I was shooting 60 frames a second, etc., cetera, uh, to match my camera. And I would have a project that would match the audio and I would not have a problem with drift. Now let's say that you've already started a project and you have started it and you're getting audio drift. You can't really change it because if you see right up here, uh, I've pretty much said that this project is gonna be 4K at this 29.97 frame rate. So I would create a new project, re-import the video and solve the problem that way. And in doing so, I will correct audio drift if I am recording audio separately. 
I hope that that was useful for those of you who, like me, love shooting video or are thinking about shooting some video and want to make it an easier process. As always, I'm going to ask you to like and subscribe. It's free. You knew that. And I thank you so much for taking your time to watch. I'll see you next time.